Hi, I'm Amir Hussain, Mirza Bozorg, and in this video, I want to talk about meshing and partitioning in Abacus. We will have several videos about meshing and partitioning in Abacus, and this is the first video. This is the table of content of this video. I will talk about meshing and partitioning, why do we create partitions, why do we want to have control on the mesh pattern and the size of elements, and increasing the meshability of a part. All of the users of Abacus must have a good knowledge and understanding about the mesh modules tools and settings because in all of the simulations most of the parts must be meshed because the FE model is based on the nodes and elements. Uh, notice that there are several kinds of parts in Abacus that do not need to be meshed. For example, analytical rigid parts. You are not allowed to create a mesh on the analytical rigid parts and the abacus itself will create a mesh on them. Before meshing a part, it must be partitioned if needed. In the mesh module, there are several kinds of tools for partitioning 2D and 3D parts. Notice that generally partitioning 3D parts is more complex than partitioning 2D parts and partitioning 3D parts needs more experience. Caution, partitioning a part does not change the connectivity of the partitions and regions of a part. After making partitions, all of the regions remain connected. Why do we create partitions? We want to create partitions for two main reasons. The first one is to create control on the mesh pattern and the size of elements. And the second one is to increase the meshability of a part to be able to create hexahedral elements and complex geometries in 3D space. Why do we want to have control on the mesh pattern and the size of elements? Controlling the number of elements and the size of the model, creating smaller elements in the important regions, for example stress risers including holes, crack tip and fillets, and controlling the mesh pattern or mesh topology itself in models that large deformation occur such as analysis of hyperelastic materials and reverse extrusion. Number of elements has an important effect on the simulation time. Increasing the number of elements leads to the increase of the simulation time. For example, by optimizing the number of elements in a model, the simulation time can be decreased from one day to several hours. Notice that optimizing the number of elements in a model is very, very important in large models. Optimizing means that we create smaller elements in the important regions, for example, in the stress risers or around the stress risers. And we create bigger elements in the far fields. As the gradient of stress and strain with respect to the position is small enough in the far fields, there is no need for creating smaller elements in the far fields. So we will create a mesh that leads 
to an accurate simulation and the number of elements is decreased as much as possible. So the number of elements is optimized. Here in this region we have a stress concentration but here there is no stress concentration so in these regions we have created bigger elements and in this region we have created smaller elements and the crack will initiate and propagate from this point so we have created a smaller elements around the stress riser so the simulation will be exact enough in this model i want to simulate the compression test of a hyperelastic cylinder so i must use this kind of mesh pattern so i must create this kind of partitioning that allow me to create this mesh pattern when we are simulating the hyperelastic materials large deformation will occur so we must use a specific kind of mesh pattern in this model i want to simulate the reverse extrusion process by using the ALE technique if you want to simulate the reverse extrusion by using the ALE technique you must use this kind of mesh pattern that leads to an accurate simulation but if you do not want to use this kind of mesh pattern and you want to create a simple mesh pattern you cannot use ALE technique uh, because in the simulation error will occur and the simulation will not be completed so you must use the CEL technique that takes more time so it's better to use this kind of mesh pattern and use the ALE technique We want to create hexahedral elements on this geometry. But at first we cannot do this because the abacus does not allow us. So I will use partitioning and totally I can create hexahedral elements on the geometry. Partitioning increases the meshability of the geometry and help us to create hexahedral elements on the sophisticated geometries. In the next video, several examples will be solved for teaching how to use Abacus Mesh Modules tools and I will introduce several tools of Mesh Module that are very important and I will introduce several mesh modules tools that are very important in meshing and partitioning. You can contact me by using telegram and whatsapp or sending email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk and whatsapp. And I can create a special videos to your order. We can perform high quality simulations too. For example, we can do simulations for your thesis exercises and industrial projects. Thank you so much. Goodbye.